Good evening, I'm Ashley Scotland, our top stories on news update today. Budget 2018 has no new tax measures. Government collects $1 billion in oil money. Kai Suko maintains no severance pay will be given to former Wales sugar workers. An encored taxi driver allegedly caught with ammunition released on $60,000 bail. To begin tonight's newscast, we tell you that, following the public outcry towards the new tax measures implemented as a result of Budget 2017, Finance Minister Winston Jordan declares that there will be no new taxes in the next budget. Budget 2018 is set to be presented on November 27, 2017. Find out more in this negative. Report. Minister of Finance Winston Jordan says the parliamentary opposition has refused to attend pre-budget consultations even though they were invited on three separate occasions. The only consultation the opposition attended was in 2015 budget consultation and um, thereafter they they will write me letters saying well before they can come to the consultation they need require a range of documents and so forth. And my, my answer to that, or my non-answer to that, because I never responded to uh, the request, is that all of you are asking for is either on the internet or we can't provide. And that, that is not a basis for consultations anyhow. Because no other uh, group or agency or whatever uh, asks me for any um, document or so on. Because the consultation says to, to, to provide a, 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 a an avenue for uh, exchange of views and so on and so forth. And the opposition seems to be very well attuned to what is going on in Indiana. And every document that can be made public, we have made public, including IMF documents. Minister of Finance Winston Jordan speaking with media operatives this morning. He said pre budget consultations are still ongoing having met with the government ministries, civil society, among others. The finance minister added that they would have broadened the pool of persons being consulted with to have a diverse concept to plan ahead. He noted that no new taxes would be placed on the citizens in the 2018 budget. I said, okay, no new taxes in this budget. Anything in this budget is about cleaning up or providing an incentive or two, as promised. Um, uh, we promise some sectors that we will see how we can support them in this renewal, right? Especially in the far, far, especially in the forestry, forestry area. So we will be looking at how we can support um, that um, um, sector. And um, there are some other promises or so that we might have made that we want to see whether <coughs> in this budget we can um, provide that. The minister, however did not elaborate on what specific measures would be taken by the administration on the issue of fat and private tuition. Yes, it will, it will, be, it will be reviewed. In the, it's under consideration in the 2018 budget. Nikhil Jondo reporting for MTV News Update. The police have arrested a mastermind behind the gruesome killing of two senior citizens last Tuesday. The women were suffocated and manually strangled, compounded with trauma to the head. Police say a team from George Dung, led by a senior officer, acting on intelligence, arrested the prime suspect. The mastermind was at a house in Karawab, Pomeroon River, approximately 65 miles from Charity, Esequibo Coast. Constance Fraser and Phyllis Caesar were killed at their South Road and Albert Street residence. PPP councillors on Region 3's Regional Democratic Council are planning a protest against their APNU AFC counterparts as the latter orchestrates mass exoduses at the council's statutory meetings. This stymies the development in the region as no decision can be made in the absence of these meetings. Here is more from Sandy Ramatar. The September 20 statutory meeting for Region 3 Regional Democratic Council was chaotic as officials were once again ordered to leave the meeting. This instruction was allegedly handed down by an APNU AFC councillor, according to Vice Chairman of Region 3, Sheikh Ayub. Well, we, if this continue, we might have to um, go on a picketing exercise. Well, we're going to write the minister first, mm -hmm. I think, as it relates to the declare for council. You see, if they, if they walk out of the meeting, it ain't by the week, mm -hmm. because they still have a quorum, right? Yeah. But when the clerk of council is answerable to the RDC walks out, this is where the problem lies, because he has to answer 
mm-hmm. on issues that raise in the RDC. The walkout comes as a result of PPP councillors' failure to attend a government program held in the region. However, she claims that two PPP councillors, along with two councillors from the APNU AFC, attended. When I invited people to attend these programs, right, they are attending these people in a private capacity. Because private or invitation, individual invitation will go out to these people. Therefore, the RDC chairman or the chairman of the regional vice chairman does not have an in- impetus to tell her if to go or not go. Because it's a private invitation. While the remaining councillors would have liked to continue with the meeting regardless of the walkout, the clerk of council who administers the session also left. Meantime, councillors from both the PPP and AP and new AFC continue to create havoc at statutory meetings in regions 2 and 5. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. The government has collected close to $1 billion for activities connecting to the oil and gas industry. This was confirmed by Minister of Finance Winston Jordan. Nikhil Jandu with the details. Half year for activities connected to oil and gas. Uh, we are, the, the amount was about $900 million. Almost a billion. Finance Minister Winston Jordan said, the revenue collected for the activities connected to the oil and gas industry amounted to $1 billion for half of the year. He, however, noted that the total monies before taxes he could not provide offhand. If it would have been, it mightn't have been um, that great. Plus, I think in that $900 million might have been the resolution of one or two issues that were pending with some of the companies and so on. Meanwhile, Minister Jordan said steps are being pursued to develop their own sovereign wealth fund. He noted that the Commonwealth submitted a draft document to the government in January this year. Minister Jordan added that following the visits to some African countries, the administration has put together an alternative to what the Commonwealth presented. What we have done in-house is the farmer team that will collate all of these companies. Put them together, we go through them, see which ones we think and so on. And then we'll like send this whole batch to Commonwealth and says, listen, this is the areas that best practices various people are saying that we have issues with. And we have done all of this without having a fiscal responsibility framework in place. So we've put the cart before the horse. The finance minister further added that the government has asked the International Monetary Fund for assistance to prepare a fiscal management plan. That plan would entail how much money Ghana should set aside to spend on projects or other activities and how much to save. We hope to have all this done um, next year for this, for this fund to be um, presented to the public after we would have gone through cabinet and these chambers to be presented to the public, um, either for public consultation or via the parliament force, and then maybe select committee or, or some such mechanism, um, essentially. But uh, it's not as if you need to have a sovereign wealth fund tomorrow because the oil coming the next day. Oil is still a ways off, and let us get this right. Okay, let us get this right. The fact that you're not seeing a sovereign wealth fund, I don't know what that, 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 that I don't know what that is supposed to mean. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. More news will ahead. To stay tuned. Using state-of-the-art technology and highly trained professionals, let Optique Vision Care assist you with your eye care. Visit any of their four convenient locations at Times Square Mall on Grove Public Road, Helena No. 1 Mahaika, at the Giftland Mall, and our newest location at 350 East Street North Cummingsburg for added convenience. Their doors are open every day in the Giftland Mall, Monday through Saturday at Grove and East Street, every Tuesday, Friday, and Saturday at Mahaika. Call them today, 266-0126-222-7333 or 227-7744. I drive for the sound. I drive 
for these night lights. I drive for turns like this. I drive for the uphill battle. We understand why you drive. That's why Shell Helix fully synthetic motor oils are made from natural gas, designed for ultimate engine performance. Drive on. Future Shop is the absolute best place to shop if you're looking for quality products at the lowest prices in the widest possible variety. Choose from a vast array of custom-made quality wooden furniture in endless designs, electrical and household appliances, clothing, cell phones and accessories, and much, much more. Pio's Pizza Shop and Household Appliances, located at Anna Caterina, West Coast Demerara. Free delivery available. Credit, no me know the secret. I'm like, oh, you know the secret? Everybody, Everybody know the secret. secret. <laughs> shopping online is now much easier with Le Park and online shopping service. So, what are you waiting for? Check us out at our three convenient locations. 2-9 Lombard Street, Fogarty's Building Water Street, or 3 Strand in New Amsterdam. For weekly flights, no credit card, no problem. We can make that purchase for you. Get it in a flash. Free delivery around Georgetown. Free customs clearance with our courier service. So call now on telephone numbers 227-1055, 225-0837 or 333-4262 or visit gtpak.com for more information. In today's fast-paced world of modern finance, with its many options and opportunities, you will need good advice and help getting value for your money. Hand in Hand Trust is the way to go from owning your own home or business with our residential and commercial mortgages. We'll help you realize your dreams. You can also access investment deposit accounts, share brokerage services, personal trust, thrift and pension plan trusteeship, property management, investment portfolio management, safe deposit boxes, the convenience of our Cambio, Western Union and Bill Express services. Hand in Hand Trust for financial services and more. Helping you get the most out of your financial resources and your life. Curtains, curtains, more curtains, a decor and gift gallery. Pick your curtains for your living room, kitchen, bedroom, or just add some colors to the curtains you already have to give that Christmassy look. Shop your Christmas curtains today from Decor and Gift Gallery. Here's the what news update, welcome back. City Hall is seeking finances from the Ministry of Communities to complete the last leg of the rehabilitation of the Kitty Market. The mayor noted once the necessary finances have been accumulated, that project is likely to commence in the first quarter of the coming new year. Lashana Gomes Cornelius with the details. While noting that the rehabilitation in the Kitty market has been moving ahead at a rather slow pace, Georgetown Mayor Patricia Chase Green attributed that slow pace to the town council being cast dropped. The mayor, who spoke exclusively to News Update, further expressed while her personal wishes for the facility to be up and running before the end of the year, it is likely to be completed early next year. 
The mayor also noted, to help complete a rehabilitation with the necessary infrastructures in place, the council is currently in discussions with the Ministry of Communities to help fund the remaining leg of the project. This is despite a town clerk, Royston King, a few weeks ago boldly affirmed that City Hall does not need central government's assistance as the council is financially capable to stand on its own. We are in the process because you know we are cash strapped. But we are having discussions with the PS and the Ministry of Communities to try and somehow to assist us with some monies to complete that project. So we're hoping, and I don't want to give a date, but I'm hoping that quite soon both facilities will be up and running. This will start today and I'm hoping that will start sometime in the very, very near future. Well, in, in our budget we will cater, but I'm hoping that that will be completed before 2018. It will be my heart's desire to see it up and running before 2018. Shedding some light on what might have been one of the reasons behind the lag in the completion of the project, Mayor Chase Green indicated that the expected revenue collection did not materialize. We would have started and there are lots of constraints with cash and so. And we were not able to garner revenue from other new sources. That would have been part of our reason for starting that project at Kitty Market. And you know what's the whole story with revenue, new revenue earnings. And so now the ministry is trying to assist us with that. So I'm hoping it can be completed very early. The Kitty Market Rehabilitation Project commenced in February 4, 2016 and was slated to last for three months. The council had initially said the project will cost $240 million. However, it is now 20 months since the project commenced, yet the council cannot accumulate the necessary finances to complete the market. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. As cane cutters and harvesters remain uncertain whether severance packages will be granted to them, the Guyana Sugar Corporation maintains that alternative work will be provided for them. Thus, there is no need for the disbursement of severance pay. Find out more in the Sandy Ramutar report. Severance packages will not be paid to cane cutters and harvesters from the Wales estate despite the factory has been closed for over nine months. The Ghana Sugar Corporation, Guy Suko, maintains that alternative work is being provided to the workers, thus there is no need for the distribution of any severance pay. The only way would workers can get the severance is if their services are terminated. You can't just go to your employer and say, terminate my service, my services, right? Um, and pay me severance. That's the challenge that we're having with Wales. However, workers have over time expressed frustration through protest actions as they believe they are being forced to work. In a case where a worker resigns from his designation, severance would not be paid to them, according to Thomas. On the other hand, the Guyana Agricultural and General Workers Union is awaiting a hearing from the court in relation to the case filed against the sugar company. The court case seeks to ensure some 300-plus workers receive their severance packages. The matter is in the court. The matter is waiting a hearing in court. And so far, the, uh, the court hasn't fixed um, a hearing for the match to start. Meanwhile, the sugar company would like to dole out annual production incentives to workers. For this sucker, employees must attend work regularly, especially those at Albion Estate, to maximize production. However, no concrete decision has been made on the matter of annual production incentive. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. As early as next month, a locally processed turmeric will be available in supermarkets across the country as the National Agricultural Research and Extension Institute commissioned its $18 million turmeric factory at Hosororo Region 1. With the turmeric factory, the country will finally be able to process turmeric on a commercial basis, saving close to U.S. $400,000 annually. The factory will see Nari purchasing raw turmeric from farmers and process it before selling it to the local market. Once the institute would have fully satisfied the local market, it will be looking to export the processed turmeric by 2019, increasing the country's foreign export earnings. The Central Housing and Planning Authority has created an anti-squatting task force to form an action plan for the containment of squatters in Safaya. Sandy Ramutar has more. An action plan is expected to be created through the Central Housing and Planning Authority to contain squatters in Safaya.
This is according to Chief Executive Officer of the Central Housing and Planning Authority, Lilian Sol. The objective of this meeting is to develop an action plan for support for the men and women we serve in the society in general. But I want you to bear in mind, uh, leaving all those folks from the affected area, we see this task force uh, being in place as we seek to address squatting in other areas too. And it's very, very important. According to him, the authority is concerned about the increase of squatting in many communities. As such, the issue will be addressed through an action plan as the CHNPA does not favor the dismantling of houses. This follows the formation of a six-member team anti-squatting task force to examine the situation in Sapphire. The anti-squatting task force is headed by its chairman Brian Sobers and five other members. The task force was formed following a meeting at the Central Housing and Planning Authority with leaders in constituencies five and six. Those communities where environmental hazards exist will not be regularized as it has been deemed harmful to the population. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. City Hall will be drafting new policies to regulate vending in the city. This is to ensure the city is kept attuned to the vision of the president, clean and green. Here is Lashawana Gomes Cornelius. Mary Chase Green related to news update that it is the vision of the council to put certain policies in place to help regulate and address the needs of vendors within the city. The mayor noted while no vendors will be omitted from conducting their business at certain stipulated locations, such individuals will have to do so according to the confines of the relevant policy. If you look around, vending has gone in the increase. But as Pastor said yesterday and um, Pastor just said again, it is going to take some time for the ship to turn. And when it turns, it's going to go full blast. And we are going to then see the sacrifices that are being made now. And so while we are bombarded with vending all over the streets, I'm going to try to put a policy in place as, as to how we move with it. So I would not be preventing anybody from selling, but you have to sell under certain rules and conditions. And that is my hope for the vendors. Further, the mayor implored how important it is that vendors across the city make every effort to follow the rules set out by the council to always ensure that their immediate surrounding is kept tidy at all times. So we, I am not moving any vendors at all. I will ask them to sell, but sell under the conditions where your entire surroundings is clean. Because honestly, if you go, just take your cameras tonight on Water Street by Starbrook Market and see what is left behind by those vendors. They don't even clean immediately where they sell. And that brings a dirty side to the city. On that note, the mayor stressed how important it is that everyone works together to ensure that the vision of having a clean and green environment is attained for all to enjoy. Persons are complaining how it's untidy now, but 23 years ago when the entire city was dirty, you had heaps and heaps of garbages by the market, heaps of garbage at every corner. It's smelly and all. Nobody complained. People were afraid to complain, but in the democratic society that we have now, Everyone is free to complain and point fingers, but I just call on everyone to join hands with us at the City Council. Let us work together. This is our country, this is our city, and we need to work together to get the best out of it. What you do and what I do reflects on what happens in this city. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. Coming up, city properties to be revaluated before 2018 and postal service to be revamped. So you're going to be a top executive. You're looking into possible careers. You're going to the university. Your parents are proud of your success. The journey begins here. Enroll your child now at the business school and let us help develop their knowledge and confidence to achieve their full potential. The Business School, educating tomorrow's leaders. Gap Foods has been Guyana's largest manufacturer of steel products since 1970, and we were the first to introduce Alu Zinc and pre-painted corrugated sheets, which are produced in several widths and gauges and can be cut to any desired length. They're available in ripple, non-ripple, clay tile, non-clay tile, and trapezoidal designs. 
We supplement our corrugated sheets with curve sheets and ridging in aleusink and pre-painted finishes. Also galvanized deckings for casting concrete floors, manufactured in several thicknesses and can be cut to any length from 6 feet to 30 feet. Some of the other products produced by us are galvanized purlins in widths of 4, 6 and 8 inches and to lengths 6 feet to 40 feet. BRC fabric in sheets 6.35 mm, sizes 20 feet by 8 feet, suitable for heavy concrete flooring or areas of heavy traffic. At Gafoos, we produce the best quality at the most competitive prices and also offer the best services in the hardware business. All our steel products are available at any of our seven locations countrywide. Gafoos, the name you can trust. It's John Lewis Styles. Buy one, get one at half price sale. Buy any t-shirt, top, polo, shirt, dress, pantsuit, or skirt suit and get the second one at 50% off. Same goes for shoes, handbags, and lingerie at half price. Hurry, because John Lewis Styles half price sale ends soon. It's John Lewis Styles. Buy one, get one at half price sale. Buy any t-shirt, top, polo, shirt, dress, pantsuit, or skirt suit and get the second one at 50% off. Same goes for shoes, handbags, and lingerie at half price. Hurry, because John Lewis Styles half price sale ends soon. At GTT, Pinktober is the month we celebrate the lives of those we love. Pinktober is a time we raise breast cancer awareness. And Pinktober is the moment we all come together to make a difference. During Pinktober, your $2,000 purchase at GTT gives you data, a ticket to see Chronix, Travis Green, or your favorite dance hall act, and $500 goes directly to the Guyana Cancer Foundation. Together, we can make a difference. Do more with GTT, Guyana's number one network. Did you know almost one third of deaths in Guyana are heart related? Chronic inflammation is the root cause of atherosclerosis, the process that leads to cholesterol clogged arteries. You can now lower high triglyceride levels with Omega XL and reduce the dangerous inflammation that causes these problems. So to ensure a healthy heart and reduce your risk of disease, get your Omega XL today. Live long, stay strong with Omega XL. Relationship difficulties, depression, family challenges, Grief and loss are some situations in our lives that can cause us to feel unlike ourselves. Are you facing any such situations? Have you considered counseling? It is time you talk to a professional counselor. Let's talk. Call the helpline on 223-0001, 223-0009, or 223-0818 to talk to a helpline counselor near you today. Your emotions are important. As City Hall is still receiving the same amount of property taxes as it did two decades ago, the Council is determined to have property revaluated to ensure property owners pay the requisite amount of taxes. As such, the Ministry of Communities is currently in negotiations with a Canadian firm to conduct revaluation. Find out more in this Yanis Abrams report. The Mayor and City Council has announced that the revaluation of properties will be done before 2017 ends. Tom Clark Royston King said there has not been any valuation in Georgetown in over 20 years. However, with assistance from the Minister of Communities, this will be done within less than three months. And that is, that is unimaginable that you have not had valuation of properties in a capital for over 20 years. And what we're doing, we are working with uh, Minister of Communities, Honorable Minister Bulkan. King further said, the minister is currently in discussions with a Canadian firm to evaluate the buildings. He has initiated a program where he is in discussions with a, a, a firm from a Canadian firm and he's talking to them about doing a reassessment of, of properties in the city of Georgetown and uh, reforming the tax regime, the local tax regime in the city of Georgetown. I think it will go across regions as well. The valuation of property for rating purposes violation Act Number 30 of 2007 makes provision for property in the city to be evaluated. This will determine the amount in property taxes that each property owner has to pay to the city council. Reporting for MTV's News Update, I am Yanis Abrams. 
The Guyana People's Malaysia is building its strength as over 450 persons have been trained. The People's Malaysia is a reserve force that is called to duty whenever the need arises. Here is more from Nikhil Jondo. Chief of Staff of the Guyana Defence Force, Brigadier Patrick West, during an exclusive interview with News Update said, the force has had a successful camp for the year thus far. Brigadier West stated, during the camp, over 450 persons were trained at the junior level, with 37 individuals being trained at the reserve officer cadet level. We are as much as 50% of the mandated uh, number given to us by the His Excellency, and we are working within the short term, in the short term, to meet that number. So we still have uh, uh, some more time to the short term, in the short term goals that we have given ourselves, so we still have some time, but we are building that in, at the same time we are building the core of officers, which are necessary to support the command relationship um, to our balance of force in the militia. The Chief of Staff noted that meetings were held with the Ministries of Education and Social Cohesion to implement the National Cadet Program. He noted that the National, he noted that the National Cadet Program would be launched in January of 2018. Commandant of the Ghana People's Militia, Colonel Gary Beaton said, the reserve course is being conducted on the weekends. He noted that once per year, all the groups would come together to consolidate on the training they would have received thus far. When we have training in all regions, that's a mandate given, and that will be realized in the long term. We did start training in Letem, so we have training camp there, and next year we hope to get to Region 7, which is Particle, and perhaps Region 8. Persons who are 25 years and under can enroll with the Guyana People's Militia. The Guyana People's Militia was re-established on December 1, 2015, by President David Granger. The unit also gets into action when there are natural disasters and any other duty that is required by the Ghana Defense Force. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. On Thursday, October 5, Guyana Forestry Commission officers stationed at Kukwani reported that there was a five unknown origin at an old log market formerly used by Bai Shanlin International Forest Development Inc. at Bissaruni Region 10. A combined effort by the GFC staff, officers from the Kukwani Fire Service and other stakeholders helped to contain the fire to the location which is a large open area. The fire is now extinguished, but GFC staff are still monitoring the site. There were no injuries to any of the persons nor damage to the surrounding forest. The Guyana Post Office Corporation, which focuses on providing efficient, reliable and adequate service to the people of Guyana, is in the process of being further stabilized to meet these objectives. The facilities must be renovated and the attitudes of its workers must be more humorous, says the board chairman. More from Lashana Gomes Cornelius. Dr. Messiah was at the time speaking at the reopening of the Kitty Post Office earlier on Monday, October 9. The GPOC board chairman stressed on the deplorable state of many post offices and touched on some of the action plans that will soon be taken to turn each of those post offices into state-of-the-art postal service facilities. Uh, we will continue to roll out new programs as we advance into the 21st century. We are in the process of stabilizing things. The post office has experienced tremendous rot and deterioration over the last couple of years. And th this is reflected in the state of our buildings, for example. And generally, we want to arrest that. We want to arrest the rate of attrition of our staff. We have a staff complement of over 500. So we're talking about impacting not just the post office, but the linkages of families, communities, shops, the whole works. And so we have to ensure that we stabilize this um, corporation. 
to ensure that post office employees are adequately equipped with the required training to better enhance their flow and the quality of work, Dr. Masaya indicated that the necessary training programs are continuously carried out. So we have been training quietly our postmasters and senior officers. We've intensified this training because we want to arrest the deterioration. Once we accomplish this, we believe we'll be then set to release a whole set of new programs. And we will also make our current programs more effective and more efficient. So that's where we are. While noting that a post office is just a building with available services within, Dr. Masaya explains that quality and professional service starts from the human resources working within the facility. These individuals, Dr. Masaya lamented, are integral to ensuring that quality service is brought to the people. Upon that, we will seek to build. Critical is not just the rolling out of new programs, but critical to this is achieving the change in the mindset of our staff. We have to move from the dependency on just creating uh, goods that are generated by human effort to the point where we now incorporate that with the advances in technology. Reporting for MTV News Update, LaShawn Gomes, Cornelius. More news to ahead. Stay with us. Live healthier. Cook with canola and vegetable oil from Costco and Sam's Club, America's largest wholesale distributors. Same nutrition value as Wesson Oil. Get a case of six bottles of six pint canola oil for only $9,000. Members Mark Olive Oil also available. Imported and distributed by Isaac Investments. Available in all DSL branches and leading supermarkets countrywide. Isaac Investments. Located on the third floor of the Regent Multiplex Mall, Regent and Wellington Streets. Telephone number 231-0142 or 231-0143. This is Annie Bina. She's a clothing designer, and she really enjoys her work. She also likes to hang out with her friends. However, a life-changing event is about to occur. The mosquito that bit Annie Bina is infected with a tiny worm that causes lymphatic filariasis, also known as filaria. But what is filaria? Filaria is a disease that affects a person's lymphatic system, causing some body parts such as their feet or breasts to swell and eventually remain in a swollen state that cannot go back to normal. Filaria shows no symptoms during the early years. Untreatable chronic symptoms can appear sometimes as late as 20 years after infection. Since there are no symptoms in the beginning, most infected persons do not know they're infected, like anibina. When the symptoms begin to appear, it will be too late. Nothing will be able to make them disappear. Have you been bitten by a mosquito that transmits filaria? Are you sure that you've not been infected like Anibina? What can you do then, since you see no symptoms? Prevention is the best cure. A message from the Ministry of Public Health in collaboration with PAHO WHO. Everything is connected, our planet, our water sources, including the water we drink. Sometimes harmful bacteria end up in our streams and canals. Although treated, the risks are high. You can prevent this pollution and contamination by maintaining your septic tank and grease traps. Call the experts at Puran Brothers Disposal Incorporated on 264-1239 or 603-5050. Keeping it clean is what we do best. 
millionaire by only spending $100 on a daily million ticket. Simply pick any five numbers from 1 to 26, or you can buy a quick pick for your chance to win the daily millions. Purchase your tickets daily, Monday through Saturday, to get a chance to win $1 million every day. So, feeling lucky? Then buy a daily millions ticket today. Remember, a ticket today could make you rich today. Bibi, is we going with so much Windex for clean windows? All them fancy curtains, it's not even Christmas. Hi, girl, mind your own business. I got big plans. But, Bibi, your house don't even have windows. Eh, hey, girl, you ain't think I know it ain't got windows? Yes, I know it ain't got windows. But look, Mokesh promised me that he carried me down by the window factory when he come home at Eccles. It named Beeson. Like you know nothing, girl. Right now, everybody talking about how Beeson got the strongest windows. Plus, they got a deal right now. If you buy 10 windows, you get a free bathroom window. So I could mind your business instead of you minding me own. Beeson Windows and Doors. Serving Guyana with the highest quality standard windows for your home, office, or commercial building. Here's so what news update. Welcome back. The University of Guyana, continuing the journey along the Renaissance Road, has established a new School of Entrepreneurship and Business Innovation. Vice-Chancellor Professor Ivlaw Griffith says the university will be incorporating courses specific to the energy industry. The University of Guyana has begun 16 new courses and programs in academic year 2017-2018. Vice-Chancellor Professor Ivlaw Griffith stated that Six of those programs will be in the new School of Entrepreneurship and Business Innovation. Professor Griffith said that feasibility studies were done with business owners and students about what the university is missing. I did a survey of what the university offers and I asked myself, what are the gaps? What is missing from any university serving a nation like Guyana that we need to fill? And one of those gaps I identified was business. So I established a feasibility team, Guyanese, non-Guyanese, academics, businessmen, student, and the, the feasibility team produced School of Entrepreneurship and Business Innovation. I'm delighted that we started that school this past August, very robust enrollment, 696 students at the Turkine campus, and I think 78 at the Tain campus. The vice chancellor stated that the tourism course has moved to the new faculty since it is in the business sector. He further mentioned the courses that are being offered at the new faculty. And in SEBI, I mentioned school, uh, supply chain management. We have marketing, finance, entrepreneurship, and accounting. So there are a number of new degree programs, not simply courses. Approximately 696 new students have been accepted in the Turkine campus and 78 at the Tain campus. The university also will be constructing a U.S. $5 million modern library being funded by the Caribbean Development Bank. Reporting for MTV's News Update, I am Yanis Abrams. The Kitty Post Office has reopened its doors on World Post Day and is now well equipped to handle the day-to-day -day transactions of the public. October 9 is designated World Post Day and on this special occasion, the Kitty Post Office has reopened its doors. According to Minister of Public Telecommunications, Catherine Hughes, the Post Office is now ICT equipped. The Minister encouraged persons to use this service since it is also open for students to do research. We are reviewing and reorganizing our focus to more effectively accommodate the 20th century needs of citizens and the necessary changing roles of post offices all across Guyana. The flurry of entrepreneurial business activities and the possibilities of e-commerce and the many marketing opportunities that the internet offers anybody that might be producing a good and is able to sell it online, whether you're making tamarind balls whether you're making jams and jellies, whatever you are doing in today's world, you are able to use the internet to promote the, your entrepreneurial activities. And these are the advantages that are now available 
that we hope citizens will take care of and take advantage of at all the post offices. Postmaster General Karen Brown stated that the new post office is now air-conditioned and well-seated. Brown went on to say that the post office will facilitate the payment of utility bills, money orders, parcel posting, and P.O. Box services, including the new online service called Swift Shipping. To further improve our infrastructure, today we will officially dedicate this kitty post office. This newly constructed post office will serve residents of the Kitty community, inclusive of bill payment, parcel post, express mail service, money order transfer, package delivery for both online shoppers and local and overseas mail, and a PO box service. Chairman of the Board of Directors of the Post Office Corporation, Reverend Dr. Mertland Messiah reiterated that, Although the post office has been rebuilt, the staff is required to have a pleasant attitude towards their customers, especially pensioners, as they are the ones who helped in developing the country. We need our staff to have a transformation in their mindset and in their attitude. And that will match a building like this. So folks would want to come to the post office. You can have an air-conditioned building, a well-painted, well-defined building. And when you come in, that is like the hardware of a computer. When you come in, the software that is running the program, the people who you meet, they're gruff and rough. I pray that as we go through this new experience from this new facility, it will also reflect on our attitude, not only when they come here, but when you go to deliver the mail. The post office's hours of operation will be from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. Monday through Friday. Kippany Jordan reporting for MTV's News Update. Madia now has its own radio station, Radio Madia. Prime Minister Moses Nagamutu commissioned the radio station, which will broadcast under the frequency 95.1 FM. The Prime Minister noted during his address that the station will reflect the pride, culture and way of life of the community. He urged residents and regional officials to care the radio station and ensure that the community receives the full benefits it has to offer. The Prime Minister noted that students will be more aware of programs in the education sector, minors will be made aware and sensitized about mining practices, and residents will keep abreast with the latest information on the Guyana-Venezuela border dispute. The Minister of Telecommunication, Catherine Hughes, says private sector investment is needed to resuscitate the Guyana to Brazil fiber optic cable project. The project collapsed after there were extensive damages to the cables that were laid. More from Yanis Abrams. We, we, that contract was not renegotiated at all. It was totally quashed. Um, if you like, I could even provide you with photographs of the cable and how badly it was laid. That was Minister of Telecommunications, Catherine Hughes. Hughes stated that the fiber optic cable that was laid under the People's Progressive Party regime was poorly done. The minister further said, the money that was used to purchase the cable could have been used to do other services for hinterland regions. I mean, literally cables were, parts of the cable were visible. You could be driving down the road and if you knew where, what you were looking for and what you were seeing, you would see that the cable was there, some parts not in a proper casing, and in many cases not um, deep enough into the ground. Minister Hughes mentioned that, the Ministry as well as the Guyana Telephone and Telegraph Company have done studies on whether it would be feasible to repair the damage of fiber optic cables. A study will be done to look for possible companies in Brazil or the private sector within Guyana to supply the cables. We want to, as, um, to really in investigate the possibilities of doing a partnership or doing something with um, a company maybe out of Brazil. I also would love to see members of the private sector that may want to get into bringing a cable if they think that there is economic value to it. Um, you know, there are loads of possibilities. There are loads of possibilities. So long term, that's where we need to go. It's a cheaper way. It's a more secure way of getting good uh, connectivity. The laying of the cables commenced in April 2011. 
This U.S. $5 million Information Communication and Technology Initiative was a project initiated by the past regime to have cheaper internet service from Brazil. However, the cable project collapsed. Reporting for MTV's News Update, I am Yanis Abrams. Stay tuned for regional and international news as well as the Guyana Stock Exchange. Future Shop is the absolute best place to shop if you're looking for quality products at the lowest prices in the widest possible variety. Choose from a vast array of custom-made quality wooden furniture in endless designs, electrical and household appliances, clothing, cell phones and accessories, and much, much more. Pio's Future Shop and Household Appliances, located at Anna Caterina, West Coast Demerara. Free delivery available. Credit? No, me know the secret. I like, oh, you know the secret? Everybody, Everybody know, know the secret. secret. <laughs> Chocolate taste of Tango chocolates and fruit and nut, almond or pure milk chocolate. It takes two to eat and two to tango. Tango chocolates imported and distributed by Awahab Trading, Bar Street Kitty, and available nationwide. Tango. Modern Optical Service has made it even better by introducing its budgeted spectacle line, starting as low as $10,000 for single vision lens and $12,000 for bifocal lens, available in tinted or clear, complete spectacles at affordable prices. So hurry down to our main office at 316 Middle Street or Lot 14 Diamond Public Road opposite Demerara Bank. Enjoy over 60 years of eye care experience at affordable prices. Modern Optical Service, your eye care professionals. Don't miss the GTT Thinktober 5K 10K Walk Run. Join the cause to raise awareness and celebrate the lives of all cancer warriors. Register for $2,000, get a limited edition t-shirt, 300 megs of data, a ticket to see Chronix or Travis Green or your favorite dancehall act, group fitness training at the National Park, and $500 goes directly to the Guyana Cancer Foundation. Together, we can make a difference. Do more with GTT, Guyana's number one network. what went down at the Georgian Magistrates Courts. Two 
men who recently broke into the Chickadee restaurant on Blasingen Road and stole over 25 million in items were on Monday remanded to prison. Sean Clark, 45, and Gary Grant, 41, appeared before City Magistrate Judy Latchman, jointly charged for break and enter and larceny. The duo denied that, on September 25 and October 5, at Blasingen Road, they broke and entered the Chickadee restaurant and stole an ice cream machine and other items, totaling 25.2 million, property of Dionorine Singh. Clark was separately charged for assaulting a police officer and behaving disorderly on October 6 at Blasingen Road. According to reports, on October 6, the two defendants were found by police in Chickadee Restaurant removing items. The restaurant was closed a few months ago with equipment still inside. When an officer attempted to arrest Clark, he pulled out a knife and advanced towards the cop. Grant turned himself over to the police. Clark, however, cuffed the officer to his eye and made good his escape, but was later apprehended by public-spirited persons. Police prosecutor Aduni Innes objected to the duo being released on bail on the grounds that they have no fixed place of abode. Magistrate Latchman remanded the duo on the break and enter charge. Additionally, Clark was granted $60,000 bail on the other two charges. A 28-year-old taxi driver has been granted $80,000 bail by City Magistrate Judy Latchman for ammunition possession. Clive Williams of Diamond Housing Scheme, East Bangdamarara, denied that, on October 6 at North Romfeld, Georgetown, he had in his possession a 9mm and a .32 ammunition when he was not a licensed firearm holder. Williams' attorney, Paul Fungafat, told the court that the ammunition was found in the back seat of his client's vehicle on the day in question. However, police prosecutor Aduni Innes told the court that the police acting on information on the day in question intercepted Williams' vehicle at North Romfeld. The vehicle was searched and the ammunition along with several cell phones and a computer was found in the back seat. The prosecutor objected to bail being granted to the accused based on the seriousness and the prevalence of the charge. Magistrate Latchman overruled the prosecution's objections and released the father of $280,000 bail. The matter is adjourned until October 23 for report. Godfrey Brooms, MTV News Update. The Ghana Stock Exchange closing prices for trading session 742. Let's turn our attention to the Denver Harbor Bridge schedule. That sums up our newscast for tonight, but before we go, here's a recap of our major headlines. Budget 2018 has no new tax measures. Government collects $1 billion in oil money. Gaisuku maintains no severance pay will be given to former Wales sugar workers. And in court, taxi driver allegedly caught with ammunition released on $60,000 bail. The newscast can be viewed online on MTV's Facebook page and also on our YouTube channel. The news will be rebroadcasted later tonight at 23 hours and 6 hours on Tuesday, October 10. On behalf of our news team, I'm Ashley Scotland, thanking you for watching. Good night.